Hi everyone, I was walking on my usual hike Sunday morning enjoying the beautiful weather when I happened to come across some violets off to the side of the path. These violets smelled so sweet and fresh, but wait, when I went to sniff it a second time, I was unable to smell anything. Hmm. This phenomenon was something I decided to figure out for myself because it was stuck in my head all the way back home. After researching, I was able to learn that the molecule responsible for this ability is called ionone. Ionones are aroma compounds found in a diverse amount of essential oils and are key fragrance chemicals used in perfumery. Ionone comes from the Greek word iona, which means violets, since they are associated with their violet scent. And the chemical formula of an ionone is C13H20O, in which it is also very closely related to rose ketones. There are three main isomers of ionones, the first one being alpha ionone. It gives off a woody violet quality with a bit of a raspberry scent to it. Um, it's usually associated with the smell of iris. The second is beta ionone. It gives off a fruitier fragrance compared to alpha ionone. And lastly, gamma ionone. And this is the standard violet one would find as an aroma chemical. Now, all of these ionones are very similar in structure, but they also all have characteristics that distinguish themselves from each other. So ionones were extracted through the enflurge technique, which is macerating flowers and purified animal fat. So in short, and flourage is a perfume manufacturing technique that consisted of immersing, for example, the violets and fatty substances in order to absorb the scent. Then the aromatic oils can be extracted from these fatty materials using a solvent like alcohol. And this technique has been abandoned probably due to its low yield or even extracting none of the scent at all. So going back into what happened when I was on my hike was that when I smelled the violets, it stimulated my scent receptors, but then the ionone binded to these scent receptors, which temporarily shut them off completely. Ionones are a great molecule, but I'm sure they have a much larger function than simply contributing to the smell of violets that I am definitely interested to learn more about. So I decided to contact three of my scientist friends so we can discuss more about this amazing molecule. Hello, thanks for the invitation, Jordan. So this is Bocho. I am a organic chemist at the University of California, San Diego. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the chemical structure and synthesis of ionone. So if you want to make a perfume out of uh, ionone, um, you have to extract it from flowers, as Jordan also mentioned. But if you want to get one kilogram of ionone, you actually need to extract 33,000 kilograms of violet. And this is problematic. Because first of all, it is time consuming. Second, it, it is expensive. And most importantly, it is a huge waste of beautiful flowers. And we don't really want that. So this is when organic chemists come into place. So in 18, uh, 1893, uh, two chemists called uh, uh, Telemans and Cougars, they come up with these beautiful reactions. Uh, only two steps, but simple and easy to, to run. So you can start with the reactants citro and acetone, uh, and you go through uh, two steps, and you will get all three uh, isomers of ions, so alpha, beta, and gamma, by controlling the, the catalyst of the second step. So if you use a strong acid, such as sulfuric acid, you will get beta ion. If you use a weaker acid, like uh, uh, phosphoric acid, you will get alpha ion. And if you use a Lewis acid, uh, like the uh, BF3, you will get gamma ion. And this reaction is really beautiful because uh, the starting material is really easy to get. So acetone, you'll know it's a common solvent, citro. It is uh, just an aldehyde uh, with uh, saturation, and you can easily be attempted from isobutane and from aldehyde. So the first step of the reaction is auto-condensation uh, with, with base catalysis, a catalysis uh, to produce something called uh, pseudo-ionone. It is a acyclic. Uh, alpha, beta, unsaturate the ketone. And then the second step, this pseudo ionon is uh, cyclized on the acid catalyst uh, to, produce, uh, to produce the uh, different isomers uh, uh, of the uh, of ionons. So that is the power of organic chemistry. Hi, Jordan. I'm Sam. And I will go ahead and talk about the ionon industry. Basically, alpha and beta ionons are consumed a lot in the market. Alpha and beta ionons have a little bit different scents. Alpha has a, a violet scent, beta has a floral, woody, and free note. Those ionons are used for cosmetics and food flavorings. 
In addition to that, iron-ons market is expected to grow because a recent study found that iron-ons can be a potential medical compound. These charts and graphs show the current and future values of the iron market. In 2021, the total market was $318 million, which would grow to $443 million by 2029. Currently, Alpha Ionon has a slightly higher market share because it is a little bit more well known than Beta Ionon and Alpha Ionon has higher demand in, in the perfume industry but Beta Ionon also has a, a high demand because of its unique free scent. For regional analysis in 2021, Asia Pacific has a largest portion because of its huge cosmetic market. China and India are the two major contributors to the market. The second largest share is occupied by Europe. It is because of their um, perfume industry. I hope this helped. Bye, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. It's Kevin. Thanks for your questions. I'd be happy to talk about the pharmacology of ionons with you. Recently, there's been a lot of research into the potential medical applications of these compounds. Specifically, beta ionon has been found to have a wide range of health effects. This is because it interacts with an olfactory receptor called OR51E2. As the name implies, olfactory receptors are found in our nose and are how we detect scent. But recent research has shown that these receptors are found in every type of human cell and fill a wide variety of functions. Olfactory receptors like OR51E2 are G-protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs. These are important signal transduction proteins which have lots of influence over cellular behavior. When activated, these receptors begin signal cascades, where a series of proteins are activated via phosphorylation. This often ends with the activation of a transcription factor, which turns on genes to provide a biological response. The subject of most recent research has been on the anti-cancer potential of beta-ionine. Binding of beta-ionine to OR51E2 has been shown to cause activation of tumor suppressor genes like P53 and P38 in a variety of cancers. This happens through the MAPK or SAPK slash JNK signaling pathways, which are important cell growth regulating pathways. Activation of these genes has been shown to slow tumor growth, prevent metastasis, and even induce apoptosis in cancer cells, which can cause tumor cells to go into remission as a result. Ionone has also been used as a lead compound in the development of several new molecules with enhanced anti-cancer capability. In the images to the right, the ionone framework of each molecule is shown in red. Many research groups have developed compounds which are more optimized for fighting specific types of cancer, such as cancer affecting the cervix, liver, and even the central nervous system. For instance, 3-hydroxybeta-ionone, shown at the bottom, is a derivative which has also been shown to have anti-cancer potential for a skin cancer called squamous cell carcinoma by inducing cell cycle arrest and apoptosis in these cells. Aside from fighting cancer, beta-ionone and its derivatives have also been studied for their anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial effects. In one study, ionone derivatives showed good effectiveness against bacteria such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, which causes infections of the blood and lungs following surgery, as well as E. coli. This is particularly interesting because using a wider variety of antibiotics is a great way to combat the emergence of antibiotic resistance among bacterial populations. Thank you to all my friends who taught me more about ionones. I know I learned a lot more, and I hope you all did as well. Thank you.